So I'm going to introduce something now called a switch statement. It's a new kind of statement that we're going to learn about and it's very similar to the if and else if statements in the way that uh, when the if statement is run it evaluates a condition. If it's true then it will run the action below. If it's false it will go to the next else if statement and try that again. If this is true it will run this action etc. And switch is very similar to this. It's just another way of representing this same information. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this as a switch statement so I can show you exactly how that works. So with a switch statement we use the keyword switch and it has one input which is what the user types into the program. Uh, by the way, before we start, I'll show you what this application does. It asks the user to enter a day of the week and then gives a personalized message about what day they've entered. So if I run this program, please enter a day of the week. I type Monday. I dislike Monday. So it's a very simple application. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as a switch statement. It takes the user's input, which we've put in a variable called input. And just like most things in C Sharp, we open and close curly braces and put all the code in the middle. Now, a switch statement, uh, for example, the if statement, it has else if, else if, else if, you know, to check different conditions. However, with the switch statement, it has cases, and these represent, for example, an else if statement. So our first case can be, is the input Monday? And we represent this like this. and then we put the code in the middle right here. So in a switch statement, these three lines here are pretty much the same as these three lines right here. It's just worded differently. So because input is a data type string, our case needs to be a string. If for example input is a number, then this needs to be a number. So that's how that works. So a switch statement can have one or many cases and we're going to do one for each of these. So every case inside a switch statement must end with a colon and must terminate with the keyword break and all lines end with a semicolon. So every case header ends with a colon and ends with a break. That's just how it is. <laughs> Inside switch statements, curly braces are optional. You can put them, you don't have to put them. You can put the break inside the curly braces. It's very flexible on how it works. So I just tend to leave them out. So as long as all of your logic here, and you can have multiple lines of code uh, inside a break and the colon from the header, you're, you're all good there. So that's our first case. Monday, I dislike Mondays. And again for Tuesday, so the next case would be Tuesday. Again, we can't have the same exact case because it's redundant. The next case would be Tuesday, and we take this line for Tuesday, etc. So you can see a pattern emerging here. Uh, so the switch statement has lots of conditions inside of it. So through the power of editing, I have rewritten all of those if and else if statements into one switch statement and it will do exactly the same thing. So let me demonstrate that now. So let's just temporarily cut this logic out. Now I'm going to run the application. I type in Monday, you can see I'm getting exactly the same result. So this switch statement right here is exactly the same as all of these ifs and else if statements here. So one thing you notice is readability. It reads a lot better. So you can see it's actually a lot more minimal. Um, you can clearly see what's going on. And it looks a lot tidier than this. So that's one advantage of using a switch statement. A disadvantage is the Boolean operators. For example, if input is Monday or Tuesday, but not Wednesday. So we have a complicated thing right here. These are quite difficult to achieve with switch statements and it gets a lot messy real quick. So in that example, I would you know, prefer an if else if statement in that case to work with complex Boolean operators. 
Another advantage of using switch statements is that when you actually get a lot of conditions, here we have seven, so it's quite a lot. When we get to five or more, then a switch statement will actually execute a lot faster by the system. And this is just due to design what's going on in the background. So when you get kind of five cases, for example, or more, then I would prefer a switch statement over this just because it's actually executed faster. If you represent seven cases in if and else if statements, then the computer has to evaluate every single one. It goes, oh, this one, is it this one, is it this one, is it... But this doesn't work in switch statements. It actually gets executed a little differently. So it's more performant. So when deciding between switch statements and if and else if statements, then it's just up to you. You have to take your example and work out which one works best for you. So one thing I'm going to mention with switch statements, one last thing, is what happens if none of these cases happen? What if there's a magical eighth day of the week? Or maybe the user actually spelt one of these incorrectly, then none of these cases will actually happen. If we did this example with if and else if, we would have a final else at the bottom. And that would read something like... So it would read something like this, telling the user they've entered an invalid day, because maybe they spelt it wrong, for example. So how do we represent this in a switch statement? Well, we use what's called the default keyword. So if I type default, always end it with a break, just like the cases above, then I can put that same code right here. So if I remove this logic and test the application, and then purposely spell one of the days incorrectly, you can see it's telling the user they've entered an invalid day of the week. So this is quite useful when you want some code to run where none of your cases actually evaluated true. So it's like a catch-all, for example.